The Nintendo Switch sucks. Alright, well that's not true, but the UI of the Nintendo Switch is actually something that could be heavily improved upon. We recently got UI version 10.0, and with that we got remappable controller buttons. Now this doesn't seem like much, because it's really not much, but it is something and it shows promise because with past updates, even the big like, you know, version 9.0, version 8.0, Nintendo has really not added anything, so even though remappable buttons isn't a huge update, it's at least something. And gives us hope that Nintendo hasn't completely abandoned the Nintendo Switch's UI. So this new update got us thinking, what do we want to see in the future? Well hey guys, it's Thomas from the Switch Stop. And PJ, and today we're going to be talking about 10 additions we'd like to see to the Switch's user interface. First off is a pretty easy one, we have themes. Now Thomas has talked about this many times before, even making a concept about Nintendo Switch themes. This just needs to be something that needs to happen. The 3DS even had themes. This is just easy money and pretty much very simple to do. I just think it's long overdue and it does need to happen in an update coming this year. Yeah, I mean, this is something I've wanted literally, I mean, I think I made a video about this in like April of 2018 so like over two years ago at this point this just needs to happen like it's honestly inexcusable the fact that they have an entire theme section but it's just basic black and basic white and the 3ds had themes but the switch doesn't like i don't understand it's more than possible to run themes because we see it on custom firmware this is just it's inexcusable it like needs to happen Another thing that should really have been in the Switch's UI since day one, but is inexplicably missing, is folders. Once again, this is just, like, why does this not exist? It really can't be that hard to program in, as Nintendo has done it multiple times in the past, with the Wii U interface and the 3DS interface. Moving on, we'll get to icon organization. Now, as it is on the Switch home screen currently, it's sorted by last played, but what I think they should do is you should be able to order them however you want, as well as having the option to disable or enable the last played function instead of just taking it out altogether. Yeah, I mean, we've kind of all gotten used to it now because it's been like this for over three years, but it's honestly stupid that there's no other option if you think about it. Like, on everyone's, like, smartphone, which I'm sure 95% of you guys have, like an iPhone or an iPod Touch or an Android, if all the apps on there were organized in the apps you last went into, like, that, like, no one would like that. That would be terrible. And, I mean, the only reason it's fine on the Switch and no one, like, gets mad about it is because it's all we've ever known. But there's, like, we should be able to choose the order of our app icons. Going right along with that, we have icon sizing. Once again, this is something the 3DS did. I'll show some footage of me on the 3DS messing around in the menu right now. So you can have one giant row of icons, sort of like how the Switch is, but then you can have two rows, and I think even the 3DS goes up to four rows, and obviously the bottom screen of the 3DS is way smaller than the whole screen of the Switch, even when it's undocked. So it's not like a screen size issue, it's just a Nintendo doesn't want to do it issue. Next we have player icons. Now the Switch itself doesn't do a very good job of representing all of its most popular series for player icons. For example, Xenoblade has zero player icons despite Xenoblade Chronicles 2 being a top 25 best selling game on the Switch. And even Xenoblade 1 is being remade, so when that game comes out, I'll be very surprised if there is no icons. But just overall, the Switch needs more player icons in general. And even in Smash Ultimate, there's something that's called a player tag, which you can basically choose a player icon. And even that has more options than just the Switch player icons itself. I think that there just needs to be more added eventually. The year is 2020. The Switch came out in 2017. And it does not have an internet browser. Like, I, I do not understand. Like, how is this even possible? How is a device that came out in 2017 and is still, you know, being used by more people than it has ever been now in 2020, how does it not have a built-in internet browser? Next is player messaging. Now, you should already be able to message your friends via the Switch friends list by clicking their profile and also even messaging them on the Switch Online app, which needs a major revamp, by the way. But this is just something that should be long overdue and just pretty easy to have done. I think that this just needs to happen. 
Taking this one step further with on-system calling, this is something even the Wii U had, I know we've been saying that a lot in this video, but um, the Wii U had this app called Wii U Chat, which is now discontinued. Oh yeah, here we go, another nice day on Wii U Chat. Can't wait to get in and talk to my f Damn it! Basically, it was like a FaceTime slash Discord alternative on the Wii U where you could FaceTime people when you were in the Wii U chat app itself, and then when you wanted to play a game, you could just go into a game and the app would, I believe, run in the background, just creating like a it, like the Wii U's very own party system. Um, This is just completely absent in... there's Like, this didn't even return in any form on the Switch, which just... Like, I swear with the Switch's user interface and just the Switch in general, like, for every steps forward Nintendo takes, they also take a step back. And it's just so... it's so bizarre. Like, I wouldn't really expect this to be added in because it is such a big update. Like, this is... this would be way bigger than anything else they've ever added in, but it's still, like... Like, this really should be in a console that is out in 2020. Moving on here, we have eShop music. Now, on the Switch, obviously, when you're in the eShop, there's just no music. And the eShop even has music on the Wii and Wii U. And talk about Thomas's point, it is 2020. And these old features that we've seen on these previous systems have these features. And something just as simple as eShop music isn't on the Switch. I think this is just, once again, long overdue. And just one of those little things that's not really end of the world, but I'd like to see it added in. Last but not least, number 10, there's no exact play counter on the Switch. This is aggravating because for those of you who want to see exactly how long you've played and uh, when you have logged this time and all of that stuff, there's just no way to see it. In fact, for the first 10 days you own a game, I don't even think you can see the playtime at all because it just says first played like 9 days ago or whatever. Now this wouldn't be a super big deal if Nintendo wasn't actively erasing my playtimes, which this is kind of a bit of a side tangent, but I got a Switch Lite a couple of months ago and I've been really actually enjoying it. It's a really neat, uh, like smaller version of the Switch. Obviously, dot. Um, but as I play games on there, on the same account that I use as my normal Switch, it like erases my playtime and then starts it over with my playtime on my Switch Lite. So if you look at my playtime for, I think, Yoshi's Crafted World and uh, Super Mario Maker 2, and I think even Captain Toad got reset, um, which sucks because I have like 50 hours in Captain Toad for some reason. And the fact that it can just kind of be erased, I don't know, like something about that just... I, I'm not a not a huge fan of it, so I wish Nintendo, because they're they're tracking your playtime to get these numbers anyway. I wish there was more a more in depth like daily log system, once again like they had on the Wii U, like they had on the 3DS. I'm pretty sure even the Wii sent you like messages every day saying how long you played what game for. So like. The fact that it's not on the Switch, once again, is just really disappointing. So to end off this video for anyone who's stuck around the whole time, uh, we actually have a pretty big announcement. We're probably gonna make a, like an entire video talking about this soon, and we're gonna talk about it a lot more. This is kind of just like a sneak peek for anyone who's watched this long in the video. We're actually working on our very own podcast. We've been working on this thing in the background for months and months and months now, just trying to make it the best it can be before we actually you know, start premiering episodes. We're gonna do a fun mix of pre-recorded episodes and live episodes so we can interact with you guys we have a ton of cool segments planned a bunch of guests lined up it's gonna be a blast so i hope that if you guys enjoy us you know if you enjoy these more discussion oriented videos and just enjoy talking nintendo with a bunch of people then make sure to stick around for that it'll be called nintendo tonight once again we'll be talking more about that in the future just wanted to give you guys a sneak peek for those who have stuck around and watched this video until the end with that out of the way, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you all for liking, subscribing, commenting, doing all that stuff you usually do. With that out of the way, uh, I, yeah, I guess thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Thomas from the Switch Stop. And PJ, signing off. Peace.